Good morning. I hope you're well. Um, it's my privilege to bring you um, the devotional this morning at Seagate. Um, I love the pastor, uh, Rick Warren, who's a pastor from Saddleback Church in California, America. Tremendous communicator, great Bible teacher. He has a real gift for taking real life situations and, and um, applying the Bible in a way which I think brings the Bible alive and very applicable. Um, Neil Beckwith sent me one of his podcasts this week and um, it was about COVID and about the response to COVID and about loving your neighbour as yourself. And he used the term um, in thinking about disease and he talked about dis-ease and um, how many of us might be feeling in a position of dis-ease. And uh, it really struck with me because I I, um, have gone from feeling quite energised by COVID and very busy at work um, as we apply um, a whole range of new approaches to support people in South Ayrshire with with COVID and how we react to that, um, to now feeling a bit tired by the whole thing, week 12 or whatever it is, feeling a bit tired and a bit worn down by the whole thing and and genuinely feeling that sense of disease, all the things that... Um, you, you rely upon that that, that um, give you a sense of uh, well-being are, are, are just not as easily accessible as they were and um, that has brought a sense of dis-ease and um, I've also been led to look at um, the resurrected Jesus and um, before he ascended into heaven um, who, who he appeared to and what he said and um, what that maybe communicates to us. Uh, Jesus did actually appear um, to over 500 people over 40 days from his death, resurrection, um, and before he ascended into heaven. And if you're not a Christian, then this is a key pillar of the Christian faith that that we believe in the actual physical, bodily resurrection of um, Jesus, that he was able to walk, talk, eat, drink, um, and be touched that he was alive, that he uh, really came back alive again. And it was really important that we understand that um, he who made the the laws of nature, he absolutely defied them and, and only he could do that as the Lord and creator and sustainer of all that we know uh, to be our world today. And um, if I was the son of God, clearly I'm not, but if I was the son of God and if I had been mocked by the religious leaders of the time who mocked him on the cross, who shouted things like he saved others but he can't save himself, um, the the Roman soldiers who tortured him and spat on him and whipped him and ripped the flesh from his back, in mockery they would bow before him and shout and hail king of the Jews putting a crown of thorns into his head as if he was a divine emperor and they would mock him if I was Jesus and I had then risen from the grave and I had become everything that I said I was and I had evidenced it, I would want to come and ride with the host of heaven through the clouds and and leave it in no doubt to those who had made um, a mockery of me. But Jesus doesn't do that. He's humble. He presents himself humbly to a number of different people, to a number of different women, Mary and Mary and Joanna, to the disciples in the locked room who are desperately praying in fear, to the disciples at the Sea of Galilee who have returned to their old ways and fishing, not in sin and debauchery, but they're just lost and they don't know what else to do but to go back to their old ways. But Jesus meets them. Jesus appears to Mary um, Magdalena who was a prostitute and who Jesus had transformed by his loving grace and forgiveness and he appears to her and she becomes one of his key witnesses one woman and in those times you needed two witnesses two male witnesses one female witness her testimony was not seen as reliable but yet Jesus chose to reveal himself to Mary um, that she would be his witness because he loved her and he wanted that authentic Um, love that she had for him to be revealed through all history uh, as it has been. I'm particularly struck with this story and we've we've done a little bit of this um, on a Sunday morning um, with Thomas McCulloch and Richard have both spoken about it and it's the story of the the restoration of Peter and I absolutely love the story and uh, I'm just quickly going to read it. If I can find it, here we go. 
So afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. Um, it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, the two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, said Simon Peter. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your nets on the other side of the boat and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then a disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say it, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he'd taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed him in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire burning with coals, and there was fish in it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've caught. And Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore it was full of large fish 153 and even with so many the net had not torn jesus said come and have breakfast none of the disciples dared ask him who are you they knew it was the lord jesus came took the bread gave it to them and did the same with the fish this is now this was now the third time jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead a wonderful story and um just a few thoughts that, that, that come to my mind that um, that Jesus of all the things that he could communicate at this time, at his resurrection at a time when his disciples are in a, a, a place of lostness and dis-ease um, he, uh, he meets them where they are he doesn't ask them to get their act together, he doesn't he doesn't condemn them he asks them to meet with him and to have a breakfast. And that's what he's done. He's prepared a breakfast for his friends on the beach. And he's there while they are in a place of disease. He just meets them where they are. And he comforts them by, by meeting their basic needs, by having a, a nice piece of fish, a warm bread, and having fellowship. And I just love that picture of Jesus. I love that in the midst of our dis-ease, that he would seek to draw close to us, that he would seek to comfort us, that he would seek to relate to us, that he hungers for relationship with us. There's two key pillars of our Christian faith, the great commandment and the great commission that Jesus has asked us to um, go into the world and make disciples and he's also asked us to um, love uh, our neighbour as ourselves and to love the Lord God with all our heart, mind and soul and oftentimes I feel that at, at this time that people are so focused on, on loving their neighbour as themselves and I think the tr response nationally has been incredible, uh, tremendous but we've lost sight of loving God and we've lost sight of the Great Commission and I think the challenge at this time is that um, we not only love our neighbour but that we love God in the way that he would ask us as he meets us in our dis-ease, as he meets us in our place of depression perhaps, lo lowness, loneliness, emptiness, frustration, tiredness, weakness, fear, a sense of feeling unworthy, a sense of feeling um, that I just don't deserve. The truth is, none of us deserve, and yet he meets us where we are at. And he draws near us, and he meets us with a warm breakfast and a piece of bread. And he says, come, come and have fellowship with me. Come and connect with me. Come and do life with me. I love you. And the, the end of that story is where he confronts Peter, and at times we need to be confronted at times we need the Holy Spirit to convict us of the things in our lives that are wrong and need to be corrected and Jesus won't be soft because he needs to be honest with us that he can transform our character and Jesus confronts Peter three times and it hurts Peter but then he restores him he restores him and he tells him that he will be the rock in which this, his church will be built 
And I just love this picture of Jesus. And I just pray as perhaps you feel at this time that you're tired and you're moving into a time of dis-ease and frustration and tiredness that Jesus will meet you and wants to meet you and he knows you and he wants to meet you in your disease and he wants to comfort you and he wants to draw near you but he also wants to use you that you would love your neighbor as yourself that you would love the Lord God with all your heart mind and soul and that you would and go out and make disciples. A great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission will grow a great Christian. That's when Eric warns. Let's pray together. Our Father, we just thank you for the picture that you paint, that despite the fact that you are the creator of the whole universe, that you are the God of all creation, that you would choose to draw alongside your friends and make them breakfast at the side of the beach. That you would choose to make me a, a woman whose life had been um, traumatised by, by what men had done to her. That you would choose to restore her. That you would choose to love her. That you would choose to reveal your glory to her. And Lord, as we reach a time of feeling perhaps tired and weary of this new way of being... Lord, I thank you that you meet us where we are. I thank you that you draw near us. And I pray for all those who are listening and watching, that, Lord, those that perhaps don't know you, that they would just turn and cry out to you and find you to be faithful and true, that you would meet with them. For those of us who do know you, Lord, forgive us for the times that we get it wrong. Help us, Lord, to commit to loving our neighbour as ourselves, to loving you, our Lord and our God, and to um, being committed to the Great Commission, to reaching others in your name. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening. God bless you all. Bye-bye.